2022. A new year, infinite possibilities, a fresh start. Just kidding. We all know it's gonna be 2020 season 3. Which is why I'm back. Just another curse to spice it up. This video wasn't planned. I just got over optimistic with my schedule in terms of timing and to avoid being overly late for my comeback, I decided to sneak in a new concept because why not? After Kaya reads and Kaya recommends, I introduce to you Kaya watches. And in a few weeks you'll be seeing Kaya plays. I think at this point I should just rename my channel Kaya does things. So the wheel of time. As you might know, I recently read and reviewed the eye of the world and uh, hello? Hi! Oh me, oh my! Who might you be, stranger? I wonder! Tis I, Cosmere Informant, at your service. Wow, welcome! Just in time for some holiday shenanigans! That's right, my Cosmere informant crossed the ocean to visit me and while being together in Paris, the city of lights, the city of love, we stayed inside and watched the Wheel of Time show. And I know, I promised I would be back with an Oathbringer video, but things didn't go according to plan. If you want the details and some life updates, stick till the end. In the meantime, let us take a look at this adaptation. Let's scrutinize it. We don't know where or to whom. If he was reborn as a girl or a boy. Stop! We just started! What, what do they mean, women as the dragon reborn? The, the dragon was a guy. I mean, I guess. Hear that, Moraine? You're wrong. Ugh. <sighs> I hate the sequence with Loghain. It feels forced in, like executive meddling or something. Why is he screaming? The dread of existence. Coming of age ceremony. It's alluding to the Aes Sedai, obviously. That's good. Ah yes, the braid thing. Trust the river. <laughs> oh my gosh, did she just kill her? Can you imagine if it was me? I would just die. I can't swim. You're married. Your life's over. Excuse me? When did Perrin get married? Matt, Rand, and Perrin all feel really good and convincing. I buy their friendship. I mean, this is just really good. Yeah, the friendship in the book was more told than shown. Matt in particular is done way better here than he was in the books. All of them are already more likable. She barges in like she owns the place. What's with the wife? They just completely replace his family and Master Luhan and everything? And what's happening with Matt's family? Uh, just... <sighs> Master Luhan and Abel Cawthon are side characters, but they crop up again a lot. It's weird that they're done so dirty. I don't understand the family thing either. It looks like they made his family sh to show that, you know, how good he is despite his flaws and stuff like that. And like, it's effective, sure, but I don't know, I just, I don't like this. Aww. Aww. Oh, wait. Wait, with the parents nearby? Uh, I'm sorry, what the f*** is happening here? A lonely life. Being in wisdom. No husband. No kids. Huh? Why? Wisdoms can't wed, as opposed to seldom wed, feels forced and dumb. They, they didn't need to do this. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no! <laughs> Pat and Fane feels off, but he's very charismatic, so I think this is a wash. I will proceed to forget that name and just think of him as the merchant. I must say, I like the portrayal of their relationship already, because in the book they didn't feel like a couple at all. Ah, there we go. Angry Nynaeve is in the place. Do you hear that? Don't tell me they're trying to figure out the name of the wind. <coughs> oh boy, it's time. That's a beautiful trollog. <coughs> There's the sword. <laughs> What is this? Moraine, the last airbender? I said I, the last one power bender. <laughs> Did Nynaeve just get kidnapped? What? Why give him a wife if you're gonna kill her? Uh, he's He's got this whole thing with the axe throughout the series. I don't know, this is... Oh, this feels weird. Goodbye to rivers. <gasps> the white cloaks? Okay, if this is... Valda, he seems kind of out of character, but this actor is so charismatic, it's, I, I really can't argue with it. Who even is this guy? Ah yes, burn the witches, I guess. Okay, b****, calm down. Ooh, nice touch with the blue nail polish. I want to see Egwene become an Aes Sedai. Oh wow, 
That's some serious case of the Rona. Voidbringer! Oopsies, wrong series. You saw them too. But it was a dream. Interesting. She knows about this right away. In the book, they all hide it from her. Yeah, Bornhold really comes through as the reasonable white cloak. How do you even remember all these names? The Manetherin story is a little bit better in the books, but it's definitely the highlight of this episode. That's just, they did a really good job with it. This is just a great story and she delivered it well. Love the singing. Yeah, Matt starting the singing is nice. That's a nice touch. Oh. 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 Parents, puppy friends are here. <sighs> Not again. Ghost Town? Shadar Logoth, yeah. A couple of things. Um, one that's more words than you've said all day, probably ever. Matt is matting and I love it. Look, Matt is matting so much he's going to grab that cursed dagger. Yeah, but where's the creepy old man that gives him the knife? That guy's important. Beautiful. To be honest, I would steal it too. Yep, the shadows are waking. Good job, Matt. You've killed us all. Ugh. Making Moraine mad at Lan for going into Shadow Logoth seems like unnecessary drama and it doesn't go anywhere. See, this is why there's no way I'd survive in this world. There's so much running. Me and my zero stamina would fall behind and die. If you don't take me to them right now, I'll slit your throat. Nynaeve, yeah! <laughs> that re entry was amazing. Damn, she really said. My esteem of Nynaeve goes up just for that mighty hair flip. Where are my friends? Somewhere, puking bats. <laughs> now, this is what I call sexual tension. Are you really in a position to be making demands? It's not a demand, it's a threat. Only Nynaeve to act up while she's the one tied to a tree. Perrin, this is episode 3, and the only thing you got going for you is your wolf thing. Stop running away from your puppy friends. Speaking of, where's Elias? I'm expecting farmers and innkeepers and such to be cut out, but literally every character that helps Perrin's growth is just gone. Nice introduction for Tom. I'm gonna need to get these songs. They're damn good. Sir, the whole concept of donations is them donating to you. Does he look like he's donating right now? Dead. The dagger is making you think that, Matt. It's okay. It'll be all right. Do you want a Kit Kat? Do you know the song? Uh, are you the Parshendi or what? The tinkers feel weird. Why? Their clothes aren't bright. They're supposed to be bright. These just look like hippies. This Aiel scene is confusing. Uh, because spoilers. What? Matt is great, though, and Tom's influence is very effective. Innkeeper Lady is showing up too much. Why are we wasting our time with this? T oh sh. She's evil dagger girl, isn't she? <laughs> I came on too strong, didn't I? Yep. Dark friend. Dark friend? Oh my god, dark friend. This is not the kind of friend I want. Stop it. Ah, breaking down the door. This is the lightning bolt scene from the book. I get it. I don't remember that. Of course I don't remember that. Damn, Tom. Knife throwing on point. False dragon. Where's Bell Doman? He do be missing. Who? He hears voices? Oh, I hate Logan hearing voices. I hate him saying that they're the previous dragons. This is just this is just detracting from future madness. I do like Logan himself though. Actors killing it. The Sai Sedai camp is new. Wonder how this'll go. And so Logan is stilled. That what was the screaming in episode one then? Shielding isn't painful. What 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 were they? Ooh, the outcast having lunch on her own, and the bully sneaking up on her. Wonderful. Why is Matt spitting darkness? You're, you're coming on too strong. Let Matt be subtle. We have plenty of time. Little did sweet summer child Adam know that we, in fact, did not have plenty of time. Love the doll, because spoilers. You know too much. Tom's backstory is on point. I like them thinking Matt is the channeler and Rand being wary of the Aes Sedai is excellent. The warder's viewpoint is a really nice ad. Yeah, and Nynaeve is smiling and everything. Nin hanging with the warders is great. <laughs> Greens be f***ing. Kinky. What? Did they have Matt kill the- Oh sh no, it's the Fade! Oh, thank goodness. But also, oh no! Matt seeing the Fade is admittedly badass. Oh, poor Tom. He's great, but he didn't last long enough to have an impact. He needed another episode. Love him, though. 
The reds are a little overdone here, but it's very interesting to meet Leandrin so early. Yeah, this does seem early. I don't know this lady, but I hate her. This bit is really good, but the old tongue is kind of has like an extra association with Matt. It's weird not to give it to him. You're not exactly what I thought you were. Right? I didn't give Booklan any attention, but damn, Sholan is hot. This isn't how shields work. They're not force fields. They prevent him from even reaching out to touch the source. Like, how will this affect literally every future shield plot? This is a major mechanics change for the purpose of some mediocre CGI. Hard disagree. Whoa, that was so cool. Love it. Uh, hmm. They didn't show her needing to be angry. Does she not have her block? I mean, it would be better if she was just healing Lan. This feels like a bit much. And Loghain should not be able to see... Nynaeve's power? Like, men can't see women's weaves. I mean, maybe this is just him seeing her as a Taviran, since she's apparently a Taviran now? Ugh, jeez, there's more airbending for the Lynx. I just, I hate all of this unnecessary pomp. It feels fanficy. I don't know, it was funny in episode one because I didn't expect it, but I kinda like it now. That's it, Loghain, you be gentle now. That gaze, I am successfully intimidated. Why are you trying to make me sad all of a sudden? They drew a wheel! They're gonna come back in the next weave. Tarvalon. Tarvalon? It's Tarvalon, you uncultured swine. Oh no, run! He already thinks you're dark friends. Loyal! I called him Pigman once and Adam got mad at me. Yeah, because how dare! Always in such a rush. Oh, come on! It's supposed to be, you humans are so hasty. We know what hasty means. I mean, I know we're American, but we're not complete idiots. <laughs> Loghain, I'm gonna need you to never, ever do that again. That was terrifying. Valda is killing it. Though he doesn't feel like the same character. I, I wonder what they're gonna do with him. The yellow eyes, finally! Wait, his eyes are back to normal? That's not how it works. Women hold the one power, but men still control much of this world. Death to the patriarchy! I don't know why Valda got so scared of Perrin, or, or why is this particular brand of zealous for that matter? Uh, you know, knowing what I know. The only thing I know right now is I love Egwene. The water scenes in this show are all really good. Strong agree. Ugh, why? I'm sorry, I don't intend to spare you any of my tears even though I really want to. Two funeral scenes in one episode is too much. Religion isn't this explicit or ritualized in the books, and this feels like they changed it to be trendy. Uh, you know, it's like similar to the scene on the Sardaukar planet in the Dune movie that just came out. It really feels like an everyone's doing it kind of thing, like a, a jumping on a bandwagon. Plus, the, the second one feels overdone. Are they gonna do this entire screaming ceremony for every warder who's killed in the series? Because I don't think we have the runtime for that. Um, hi, hello, how are you? But most importantly, who are you? I know. <laughs> I thought reading book one would be enough for this, but I was wrong. Wow, okay, hi queen. Purification, purification. I've healed him of his connection to the dagger. Wait, healed completely? What? Grumble, grumble, spoiler stuff, grumble. This is like multi-book levels of changing stuff. If wisdom is the title you claim, I suggest you start using some. Ooh, shots fired. What is with all these bath scenes for the Aes Sedai? There's one major character and one whole faction who are noted for bath scenes, and Moraine and the Aes Sedai ain't it. You cannot distract me with gratuitous tits. This just feels awkward and misplaced. Moraine is usually so solemn it's weird when she smiles. <laughs> She's ascending! Oh hey, they're friends. Whoa, okay, they're very good friends. Uh, the swan telling them to go to the eye of the world bodes very ill. The first book is far from my favorite, but this kind of thing makes me worry about how they're gonna change it. Swan's actress is killing it in this episode. Oh yeah, she's great. Can we take a sec to appreciate how gorgeous Moraine looks? Why is Swan doing a, as you all know, about how the Oathrod works? This plot device isn't important for 
books. Yeah, and you had to shove in the explanation this clumsily? We love exposition. Yeah, uh, Moraine can't lie. They don't need the oath rod to make her accept this. Yeah, but it's a cool rod. Does it vibrate? Asking for science purposes, of course. Oh, uh, this banishment scene. God, this is a mess. Why? Uh, the oath that they have her swear takes the teeth out of this banishment, especially if you suspected that they were working together, which you wouldn't have until all of the crying and the way she changed the oath screams that they're closer than they appear. Plus the turning their backs on her thing, that just feels real out of character for Aes Sedai, and it frankly looks dumb. The way gates are Ogier things, that's why they need loyal. But not only is this Ogier grove not in Tarvalin, which is going to cause future plot point problems, it's as far from the trees as they could get it. And it's just for the scene of them riding up a few at a time, where Moraine apparently can't see people riding horses 30 seconds behind loyal. It's like a three minute ride from the trees. I, I feel like I'm nitpicking, but why do this if it's going to be clumsy? Aesthetic. Okay, more importantly, now the gates require channeling to open when the Ogier cannot channel, and neither can the Shadow Spawn that are using this. You mean to tell me hitherto unheard of Dark Friend channelers are risking the Black Wind for every disposable squad of Trollocs? Oh wow, yeah, I didn't think of that. Matt! What are you doing? Yeah, what are you doing? Matt, move! <laughs> really just stood there staring into the distance just open the door you can't open the door this scene is awful but this is real life writes the plot here the actor needed to quit the show it's going to cause a lot of story shit to change and it's this is definitely going to be a weak point for the show but it's not actually anyone's fault do we know for a fact it's because the actor quit do we know why he quit <laughs> <laughs> this Aiel woman is badass. It's okay, you can say Rand's mom. That much is pretty obvious. I was avoiding saying her name. There cannot be any use of the one power within the ways. To do so would be to throw yourself at Martin Shin. Oh, you can't channel in here. Obviously one of them's gonna channel though, so might as well just channel now to open the door and drag Matt's butt with you. I don't like Machin Shin. It feels reduced. But Nin is such a baller in this scene. I kinda don't care. I actually really like this scene. Alright, so then how did Fane follow them? He can't get through the ways because you need to channel. And the way that he pops up, it almost feels like he beat them here somehow. Moraine sicking the red Aja on Matt is a terrible way to handle him being missing. Why did she do that? What if they hurt him? Min is fine, I guess. I, I don't really like how they tackled her powers, and I don't much like how she was acted, and I don't like how they treat her as the seer, but, you know, at the end of the day, I don't care that much just because I'm, I know this is heresy, not that big a fan of Min. Stop, I am so tired of you two fighting over her like she's something you can win. Ooh, the tea is hot. Spilling the tea like that feels forced, though. And while there was some chemistry between the two in the books, this just feels like cheap melodrama. Uh, you know, like, uh, opposed to, like, building on book subtext for the show, which they did really well with Swan and Moraine. So there was something there. Reading the book, I had the feeling Egwene and Perrin liked each other, but then I decided it was just in my head. The air in these borderlands has... Stop saying these borderlands. You just sound embarrassed about the borderlands being called the Borderlands for some reason. I, I, this is such a small thing, but I am irrationally bothered by this. Wait a second. Did he just teleport? Now this is the kind of thing I'm here for. Good feels. Woo! Yeah, Nin, get it. They're cute, I like them. Ooh, she's redoing her braid. We all know what that means. <laughs> the wisdom never wets. We're still talking about this. Just never wet. Rand's I'm the Dragon sequence is very well done, and the archery sequence that surrounds it is probably implying the flame in the void, which is a nice touch. Huh? Rand's mom had time to slay a dozen men and give birth before collapsing. What did she eat for breakfast? I'm gonna need that. Where have you been? Oh, she knows! Egwene is all, you was f***ing, right? This is amazing. It's me. Oh, don't tell me they left. The drawn-out reveal that Moraine and Rand just bounced is well done. They left without the rest of them? Eh, the blade looks impressive. This is terrifying, I love it. What do you mean, reborn? He's the dragon. 
Whoa! 3,000 years ago is more advanced than 3,000 years later. Her wisdom never wets. Say it one more time, and I swear I'll turn red on you. I will hate the man you choose, because he's not me, and I will love him if he makes you smile. Ah, I remember this from the book. The only reason I remember it is because it came out of nowhere and I was so confused. Nynaeve and Lan's relationship development in the book is seen from the perspective of three oblivious idiots. Ah yeah, that makes sense. Also, Lan, calm down. You spent one night together. Ew, no! Don't give him a normal human face. He's not scary anymore. Stubborn as ever, Lose. Why are you calling him Lose? It's Lose Theron. You should know better. Nobody calls him Lose. Ooh, he shouldn't be waking up. He should be dead. He got so lucky. Moraine can't touch the power anymore? Oh, I hate that. Uno is a welcome sight. You know, that he's not cut. But uh, he's another character that doesn't feel right. Lord Aglamar is done so dirty in this episode. I mean, his sister is too, but you know. I, I mean, he's one of the five great captains. Like, you can hear the capital letters on those. This feels like character assassination more than anything else. Poor Aglamar. He deserved better. This cough cough secret box cough cough is uh, fine, I guess, but. The original way it was introduced would have made more sense with the whole Matt recast. Secret box? What's in the secret box? It's a secret. I don't like this channel or sequence. If circles this small and weak can kill that many Trollocs, then why do we even need the dragon? There's enough Aes Sedai to just suicide attack the entire last battle. Uh, it feels like they decided the Manetheran story was a Chekhov's gun that they needed to fire, uh, but I, I, I don't know. This did nothing for me. Still hate the airbending? It just turned the dark one to dust. I will always hate the airbending. I can feel the whole world. After the dragon reborn, let me introduce to you the dark one reborn. Oh my god! How did Fane get the dagger? He never went into Shadow Logoth and got fused with Mordeth, so why does he even care about it? Does Matt not get relinked to it? He wasn't healed this early in the book, so I assume that's what was going to happen. What What is going on? What is this? Is this supposed to be night? You're telling me Tarvalin becomes Shadow Logoth at night? <laughs> uh, Rand? Where do you think you're going? He just f off? And he left with the treasure. It's fine, I'm sure Matt will steal it back along with the dagger. Alright, the, the, the conflict with Beelzeman is fine, I guess, but uh, what did he do to Moraine? Is she stilled? How will that work? Maybe they're setting up something for the fourth book? I, I don't know. Oh no, Nynaeve! Never mind, she's fine. This wasn't the last battle. So the last battle is still coming. Why on earth would she let Rand leave without her? She spends literal books following him, doggedly, desperate to help him save the world. What is this sh All right, all right, they set up the Sean Chan, but what's gonna happen with them? It looks like they're skipping book two, so are they not skipping book two? A and they have stupid helmets, yeah, but what the hell is this face paint? And uh, incidentally, why are they shoving uh, an entire tidal wave at a little girl and a cliff? There's a lot of side characters they could combine or change, and it's not a big deal. Uh, Uno, for all my griping, realistically could have been cut entirely. But every time a character of relative importance gets the axe, I just get confused. Now, the strength of this show, the reason that I am critiquing this and not shunning it, is how well the show embodies the characters. Most feel right, and the characters who weren't focused on enough in the original book are getting the attention they deserve. But this makes it all the more jarring when a character doesn't feel like like themselves. Uh, Uno, for example, is missing his drill sergeant vibe. He actually reminds me of the mute cameraman from the Hunger Game movies, a a and it's puzzling that they would replace uh, one of the, you know, more prominent Asian characters in the series with a white guy. I, I, I don't know. This is rapidly going into fanfic territory. They've changed so much that I think they're skipping book two entirely. If I at least saw what they gained from these changes, I wouldn't be mad about them. But it seems like they're just changing things without thinking them through for the hell of it and are causing problems for themselves. <sighs> I don't know.
My critique of the show is very limited compared to Adam's because I only read book one when he finished the series, so he knows a whole lot more than I do. And although half his comments don't make any sense to me, I'm sure they are justified. From the perspective of someone who has basic knowledge of the story, I'd say this is a pretty damn good show. They made an incredible job on the visuals. It's nice having an idea of what the world and the characters look like, and with the characters, who are a thousand times more interesting and likable than they are in the book. Brand, Matt, and Perrin's lifetime friendship is more believable. Rand and Egwene now feel like a real couple. I used to roll my eyes at Nynaeve, but now I love her. I barely remembered Lan and Loyal from the book, and now I can't imagine the story without them. The diversity among characters is so refreshing. Most of this was achieved thanks to the talent of the actors and their chemistry, so great casting as well. That being said, I am worried about the future of the show. I didn't mind the changes right up until episode 8. Matt not tagging along was the first big thing, but the last episode is straight up a mess because it completely deviates from the book. The show is a pretty good adaptation up until that point, so now my question is, what is the purpose of the show? What is it trying to do? As a TV series, I give this a 9 out of 10. You might think this is generous, but I was genuinely entertained and invested. As an adaptation, 5 out of 10. Again, might be generous, but I'm putting aside the changes that I didn't mind and those that were made due to the difference in media. My biggest problem is the finale and judging by it and how far they go into the new storylines in the next seasons, the show can hardly be considered an adaptation. Well, well, well. When I added this video to my schedule, I didn't expect it to be time consuming, but hey, looks like nothing ever goes according to my plans. But it's fine. It was tons of fun, and I'm very curious to hear you guys' opinion. So throw them down in the comments below. I must say, the show definitely did a good job there because now I'm hyped for the next books. I will keep reading at least to book three, then see if I like it enough to continue or just stick to the show. But it's not gonna be anytime soon. I apologize, but I'm juggling with so many things right now, like school and the chaos it brings into my life as well as my mental health because yes I'm still prey to the big sad. I'm doing my absolute best to make my content in time and most importantly pour all of my love into it. Back in December I decided to take a break from YouTube and art in the hopes of resting and relaxing and that did not go so well. I had exams to prepare for, a group project that sucked the life out of me and that essay I dedicated to Miss Bourne that my teacher did not appreciate very much. Stupid Lord Ruler apologist. So lots of work and I am still Still as exhausted as ever, but the bright side is I got to spend time with my family and Adam, my dearest Cosmere informant that I finally got to meet for the first time after a year of long distance relationship and battling with COVID travel restrictions. And well, the wait was worth it because those were my most magical holidays. Because on top of croissant tasting sessions and getting lost in the streets of Paris because I'm terrible with directions, we got engaged! <laughs> Now I don't know what happened in his mind when I proposed and he said yes, but he chose to make the biggest sacrifice, getting stuck with me forever for the good of humanity. That's right, you guys are now protected from me and the menace that I am. You're a sweet treat. We're hiring a sales at for the ceremony by the way, so hit me up. Before I leave, I want to give special thanks to my coffee supporters. Adam. Rascal sent a tip as soon as I showed him my freshly made page. Laconian Imperial Navy. That's a serious sounded name. Oof. Fear. Ufier? I'm sorry, I don't know how to say it, but I appreciate you so much, my man. And Angel, which is a perfect name because you, sir, are an angel. Thank you so much for your adorable messages. Those made me go refill my tear tanks. Your overwhelming support. We're still missing one gancho. And the 25 virtual coffees. I am virtually duly caffeinated. If you would like to become part of my army of radiant ganchos, because you guys are already my sweet ganchos, the link is in the description. This is of course not an obligation. I already appreciate you all. Please take care of yourself first and foremost. All right, now I'm done talking. Assuming anybody's still here, I hope you're doing well. Yeah, I'll go back to reading Oathbringer. I might throw in a YouTube short about the Wheel of Time themed nightmare I had the other night, but the next book review is definitely going to be Oathbringer. Brace yourselves, I have so much to say. All right, have a nice one. Bye.
enjoy this recording, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm gonna do some bloopers at the end, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Is it weird that I'm nervous now? <laughs> no, it's not weird. I remember the first times I did this, it's very, very awkward. I'm gonna sit here and do something and you're gonna be like, hmm, this poor smooth brain boy <laughs> doesn't know how to even talk right. Stop Let me coach it. him. <laughs> you know, that's not true. <laughs> Yes. Smooth brain recording one go. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so hold on. When you're done saying the line, tell me because I don't know if you are going to add something. I just realized. <laughs> ah. Okay. So yeah. What do you want me to say? Stop. Like a like a. Over. <laughs> over. Okay, we'll use over. <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll do walkie talkies instead of uh, the Morse code thing. I yes. I cannot remember what the telegraphs. All all the all the old fifties guys are like, you know. This, this, and this. Stop. This, this, and that. Stop. Mm -hmm. Over. <laughs> <laughs> Over? Over? Do you want to do that again? Or is that done? No, that was, that was... You said to use over for done. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't saying the line. We were blabbering. You said over. I'm like, what? <laughs> Wisdoms. Oh. Sorry, I interrupted. <laughs> Sorry, I interrupted. How dare you! I'm sorry! <laughs> I forgot. I'm, am I supposed to say over to? <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> you were silent for a bit too long. Hello? Hello? Recording. Katya has vanished. I must now start my life as a vigilante. So that I can hunt her down. I need to come up with a really good taken speech. I must find her. I like your voice. <laughs> what? I like your voice. Yeah, well, you're biased. I might be. Shadar Logoth, yeah. Oh my god, is that how you say it? I yes. said it. Shadar Logoth. Yeah, that's par for the course here. There's Tar of Valon. <laughs> the Borderlands. Oh no. Right, listen to the audiobooks, guys. Are you gone again? No, I was waiting for your over to That's move on. <laughs> <laughs> if, I, if I forget to say over at the end of this, do we record forever? Yeah. What's the context here? What are we even looking at? Uh... I think... <laughs> <laughs> Nin? Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> Didn't you want to add something there? I was gonna. Sorry. And you asked me. <laughs> <laughs> you stayed silent for a second well, too long. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so happy. I guess we're done. What do you think? Did you have fun? <laughs> yeah, this was fun. <laughs> really? You're not saying that just for me? <laughs> uh huh. Well, this is gonna be fun to edit for sure. <laughs> that's that's it. That's all of it. That's Don't all of it. There. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> okay then. Uh goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. I'm saying goodbye for the recording, I'm still recording. <laughs> <laughs> oh great, yeah, so all of my rambling and uh distracted sounds. <laughs> yes. Yeah, alright. Um This has been Adam signing off. <laughs> recording ends.